This is NVIDIA Reflex running in Overwatch 2, and NVIDIA has been touting this feature for a while because it helps with your latency with competitive games when you want the fastest reaction times. Also, NVIDIA Reflex has been used for frame generation in order to bring the latency down on the system because frame generation will increase your system latency as your system has to wait and hold back frames in order to generate new ones. And Reflex is a latency reduction tool has been available in a lot of games and it is also compatible with every nvidia gpu all the way back to 900 series but amd is also releasing frame generation fsr 3.0 they run into an issue because amd has only had anti-lag the latency is just better on nvidia gpus with reflex compared to anti-lag amd just recently released AMT Anti-Lag Plus. But they're also doing pretty big performance claims going from 45 milliseconds all the way to 25 down here. But the important thing to note here is that this is only compatible with RX 7000 series GPUs and newer, which means that I can test it here for you guys today with the RX 7800 XT, but not that many people are going to be able to use Anti-Lag Plus in general, but we're gonna get into that later in the video. Let's talk about Reflex versus Anti-Lag, and more specifically, Anti-Lag Plus here, its main competitor, because latency testing is very difficult, and that's because latency isn't just affected by your overall like mouse input going to your computer, getting you know calculated by Windows and then sent to your, your DirectX to API to manage the processing for the game or whatever. It, it's a little bit more than that because latency also depends literally on the frame rate of your game. But if you're at higher FPSs, then it does go lower. You get a faster response time. That's kind of what we talk about in games when we talk about faster performance. That's why my initial response of how to test this was actually to just cap the frame rate of the game so that we get a consistent latency. But as you look across with, you know, reflex on this middle one, the latency is about the same going from here from 24 milliseconds to 25 to 24. So the main issue with capping your frame rate in a game is, is that reflex and anti-lag don't actually have different latency when you cap it. Then another issue that comes with trying to test latency on your PC is how do you actually show it? Here, as you guys can see, I do have a latency measurement here and the overlay is looking very similar to MSI Afterburner. But this is basically coming through Intel's monitoring software, which is called Intel PresentMon, but I'm actually getting the whole interface from a, a, a software called Capframe X. So if you wanna try this for yourself, you can. But even this way of monitoring the system latency is different. This is the one I was using and it's called application latencies. This isn't the overall system latency either. You'd have to go to something like what Nvidia provides on their GPUs in general, and that would be the performance overlay with the little render latency. And AMD only just introduced an option to do this with their software, if you wanna check it. But even that, is the Nvidia one that's measuring latency the same latency as the uh, what AMD is measuring? So you literally can't compare AMD to NVIDIA directly because you don't know if these are the same numbers in general. All we can really do is compare proportionally what is the percentage increase of getting all of these gains and then compare this across NVIDIA and AMD and see which brand gets proportionally better gains. With that, we can finally get into the results. So let's check them out. And in Overwatch 2, according to NVIDIA's overlay, we're getting about a 32% reduction with Reflex Plus Boost. And by the way, the average latency was calculated with five different random points in the clip. And without the boost, Reflex didn't give that much of an advantage. Compared to AMD's Anti-Lag Plus, which got minus 38% on the latency, which is good ops, it did beat out NVIDIA's in, in this case. What is interesting though, in terms of FPS with Nvidia's Reflex, you do take a 7% hit with the boost on. And this one is the one with the application latency, which we will see application latency will generally be not as dramatic because it's only one part of the entire whole. 
but compared to AMD's Anti-Lag Plus, you don't take as much of a performance hit with FPS using that. I and mean, in a game that's competitive like this, you actually want latency and not higher FPS. So I don't think it makes that much of a difference in this case, but let's move on to the next game. And that would be Fortnite, where Nvidia's Reflex got a minus 11% reduction as well as a minus 13% reduction with the boost, which isn't all that impressive in the grand scheme of things. But on the other hand, AMD's Anti-Lag got huge reductions in this game, minus 30 percent on the application latency in this case and about the same reduction fps performance is really not bad now unfortunately i wasn't able to get amd's a little overlay working in this game so i can't use these system latencies from both both of these companies but pretty impressive although in a very graphically demanding game like cyberpunk nvidia's reflex kind of went crazy in this like a 50 percent reduction just with the base one and the boost you know 51 percent they're about the same same story for the application latency which is usually lower but still huge reductions here across the board and the fps difference between them really wasn't anything significant where you're like taking a hit in order to do it but let's check out amt's anti-lag plus and another graphically demanding game but anti-lag plus is not in cyberpunk so we're gonna check out last of us part one where a 20% reduction wasn't all that impressive, but we're gonna get into this one a little bit later in the video because this is kind of an odd case. Now the application latency was the same story here as well. There are gonna be certain cases where anti-lag struggles a little bit more, at least in the games that I've tested. But overall, it's pretty impressive. All of this is cool, but can you actually feel it in games? And that's what I did. I went ahead and tried it real quick. Obviously, this is always going to be subjective. Here we have anti-lag off right now. I'm just going to show you this to, to be completely sure. Adrenaline software, anti-lag is right here and it it is off. All right now we're at like seven milliseconds of latency. Uh, I mean, it feels pretty snappy right now. I mean, playing any game at 300 something FPS. And let's go all the way up to plus, okay? Five milliseconds, a little under five milliseconds of latency. So we dropped like two milliseconds. Whoa. Can I feel it? Um, well, I can't really feel it. Like, I think there's just a, a little bit of a difference. And we've got the RTX 3080 in the system. Uh, I'm pointing the wrong way. We got the RTX 3080 in the system, as you can see by the top left there. And that means it's NVIDIA. So that means we have access to NVIDIA reflex and not anti-lag now. For right now, it is disabled. As you can see, um, something I do like about NVIDIA's software as compared to Anti-Lag Plus, you can enable or disable it within the game. You don't have to go to a driver menu. In some ways that can be better or worse, but I do kind of like that. It's just in the settings menu there. Can I feel it? So right now we're at about 8.8 .8 milliseconds or something in there. Um, right, like round eight. Let's see, let's go ahead and turn it on just to enable plus boost. So this should be the lowest latency we have. We're at like eight point something there before. We're down to eight flat. So that's kind of interesting, isn't it? 20 FPS more, like 25 FPS more. I'd say that's um definitely something to consider. Honestly, like I said this with anti-lag too, I could I could maybe feel like the, the tiniest amount, but with reflex, dude, I, I would be hard pressed to ever notice a millisecond. It's a freaking millisecond. Do you know how fast that is? I don't think that's gonna push the needle, if I'm being honest. On the other hand, I did try Nvidia's Reflex in Cyberpunk 2077, which is a much more graphically demanding game, which means you have higher latency and the proportional decreases in latency are probably going to be more noticeable. And that is basically exactly what I found. When I turned it on, I could definitely feel that. Although with The Last of Us Part 1 and Anti-Lag Plus on AMD's 7800 XT, it was kind of a different story. So just check this out in my experience. So I, what is happening to our, whoa, whoa, whoa. Is this my CPU getting maxed out? I think that's what's going on actually. AMD Anti-Lag is off right now. So the real question is, can I tell latency in a game that's more graphically demanding where the latency is typically higher anyways. Right now we're at 1440p native on the ultra settings. Let's go ahead and turn it on. So just staring, standing, staring here at this, you know, bush here or whatever. We're at about 18 milliseconds. So let's go ahead and turn it on. Nothing, nothing changed. 
it's possible that that is because I'm not GPU limited. Maybe I'm slightly CPU limited. You think if you want to have frame generation on in a game, which requires low latency, so these kind of go in hand in hand. You basically need anti-lag plus to work properly in a game that you want to use frame generation. I don't know how that's going to bode for frame generation or especially even the driver level frame generation, AMD fluid motion frames that they're gonna integrate into adrenaline as well. What if anti-lag plus doesn't work properly in the game because of whatever scenario you're in? Counter to one of the main reasons that you'd wanna use frame generation in the game, it's because you would generally want to get around a CPU limit. Is that is it gonna be bad enough to not worry about? Has AMD taken this into account? And that's what got me wondering because so many games are very CPU demanding nowadays. Like, look, I have a 5800X3D, one of the fastest gaming CPUs in the planet. And just walking around Starfield here in New Atlantis can get CPU limited on that, GP on that CPU not even at that high of frame rates in general. What does this mean for people that don't have that fast of a CPU? Not being able to use anti lag plus or whatever, is it going to make FSR 3 frame generation just feel terrible in these games when you are CPU limited and you can't get lower latency when you, you move your mouse and it's just gonna feel like a mushy mess? Also got me really thinking, well, does Nvidia have the same issue on reflex and i actually found the same thing with nvidia's reflex which when you think about it is kind of obvious when you're cpu limited it basically brings the system closer to the highest frame rate latency that your cpu would be capable of actually doing if nvidia was able to make nvidia reflex work with frame generation in dlss3 then my assumption would be that amd wouldn't have any problems with anti-lag or anti-lag plus as well because i guess the, the latency is good enough for dlss 3. i'm not exactly sure and i don't have a 40 series card to test it anyways so but really what the big fear is with amd's anti-lag plus it's actually not the tech i actually think a lot of that's going to be perfectly fine and it's pretty impressive in the way that it stacks up against Nvidia's long-standing reflex technology for latency. But the real problem is is that it's only limited to, you know, RX 7000 series GPUs. One, obviously that's the absolute latest stuff, not many people are going to have them. But this is in direct contrast to FSR 3. If we look on this other page on AMD's website here, on supported products AMD is supporting GPUs as far back as the RX 5700, but recommending the 6000 series and above, but also supporting Nvidia's 20 series and recommending Nvidia's 30 series graphics cards as well. FSR 3.0 is going to be available on older GPUs in general. The Nvidia GPUs that they recommend, you know, Nvidia's reflex lower latency technology is supported on everything from 900 series and newer. Almost everybody can use reflex technology. Like this only hurts AMD because AMD GPUs are going to have to fall back on the not as good normal anti-lag technology. When it comes down to it, it would actually be more effective to if you didn't want to spend a bunch of money on AMD's new GPUs, you could actually just go to Nvidia. This doesn't even help AMD sell their graphics cards if you have one of those older AMD graphics cards that are stuck with using just normal anti-lag. You also probably have an older CPU as well, one that might not be able to run games fast enough to use anti-lag plus. So even if you, again, even if you did want to upgrade to RX 7000 series GPU, it might not be worth upgrading to it because you you get CPU limited in the game, you can't use it anyways if your CPU is slow to begin with and games are only getting more and more CPU demanding to this day. Although a lot of this could also be a problem that's going on with Nvidia Reflex and Nvidia frame generation as well. And maybe I'm just not hearing about it because I don't own it or anything that might come up with FSR 3, especially with it being so backwards compatible and wanting to support older GPUs, you might get really bad latency on older systems. That is kind of unavoidable in the grand scheme of things. But don't get me wrong though, AMD's anti-lag plus technology is really impressive. And the fact that Nvidia has been ahead on latency for so long, 
I actually wasn't even sure if AMD was going to be able to put up a good fight with it, but it kind of seems like they only started to put in a good fight once they actually needed it for frame generation. But my only fear with Anti-Lag Plus is that it kind of feels like it might be too little too late in terms of latency improvements for AMD because it's only supported on those RX 7000 series GPUs Whereas NVIDIA has been, been, been supporting this stuff for so freaking long, and this doesn't make people want to buy AMD GPUs. But let me know what you think. AMD still made very impressive technology here, something I didn't think they were going to be able to do. And they caught up with NVIDIA, I'd say in a lot of these cases here. And uh, that's about it. Y'all have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.